Welcome to another episode of the Lone Recruiter Podcast. I'm your host, Brett Clementson. And if you're a recruiter, out on your own, or just lacking general guidance or mentorship, then you've come to the right place. Our episodes are designed to give you the advice, the strategies, and the expertise you may need to become the very best Lone Recruiter. So join us, grab a cup of coffee, and let's take your desk to another level. Now, today, we are joined by Laura Biggs. Welcome, Laura. How are you? Yeah, good. Thanks, Brett. Good to be on here. Thank you. Um, uh, may know or may not know, we're on our quest to interview a uh, hundred recruiters. I want to ask them all the same questions, and I really want to compile what all those various uh, answers might look like. So um, today, I want to get into that. But just before we do, I think for everyone back mm-hmm. who's listening to this, give me sixty seconds. What's what's your story? How'd you get into recruitment? Yeah, I fell into it back when I first moved to Australia twenty plus years ago. Um, so kind of had the psychology sales side, started technical specialist recruitment, uh, did that for about four or five years in Sydney. Um, Then I managed a contract um, agency and then moved over to WA, did that for about 12, 13 years, managing technical specialist teams in recruitment. Um, And then now with my, um, who you know, our ex-training manager, uh, now running a company um, providing training to recruitment agencies. Wonderful. And what's it called? Empowered Decision. Empowered Decision. The best. One of the best. Best in town. Um, <laughs> perfect. So needless to say, you've had a lot of uh, a lot of expertise and time in recruitment. So I think your answers are going to be quite, quite interesting today. Um, mm. And I'm, I, I personally, I'm doing this mostly for myself because I think that uh, I can get a lot out of asking experts like you, um, you know, some, some very poignant questions. So here we go. Number one. Mm. If you mm-hmm. could only measure one KPI, mm-hmm. you really know where someone's desk is at, what would that KPI be? I think it depends on what kind of desk they have, you know, if it's temp, perm, um, retained or whatever. Sure. But if we're talking perm recruitment, it's got to yep. be candidates meeting clients. You know, at that yep. point, you've kind of got semi-interested both sides. You've got something to work with. Um, yep. So I think when your desk is up and running, that, that's your true measure. Um, so if interviews. you're working on building that desk, maybe an earlier measure, but yeah. Mm. And that, that's quite valid. That's interesting. But uh, look, interviews, I think I'm, I'm right there with you. I, I think that's the one that really matters because you're doing everything right mm. up to that point. Now you've got something to manage through. Um, mm. If you're building a desk, let's just go question mm. 1A. I'm curious, mm. what, what would be a metric for, for a building desk? Yeah, again, depending on the desk. Um, but if, if we're talking perm, I would say... To me, sourcing a placeable candidate, you know, mm-hmm. because I think it brings that measure a little bit forward. Um, because everyone's good when you've got an interview, the feedback's good, you're kind of off and running. Um, mm-hmm. But to me, that kickstart there is a really good measure to work with. I like that. Absolutely. Yeah, bang on, bang on. Okay, number two, what are your top three interview questions? You could only ask so three. hard to choose, isn't it? I know, I, think, I know. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're like, and another one. So I think I'd start with um, asking the candidate the top five criteria by which they're going to assess a new opportunity. Because I think that gives you your kind of candidate motivators, your money, and also what they're looking for. So um, I'd start with that. Um, why they're looking to possibly move on so what are the irritators um and and what they're hoping to improve and because that covers counter offer motivations um and i think the last one would be um how let's talk together about how we're going to best represent you to a prospective client that you're interested in so qualifications experience differentiators Mm. what's our value proposition to put forward okay i really like that so, so your second, your second one there was, um, I guess, what are, you, what are your agitators, like what's pushing you away from your current work? Um, mm. Let's talk, what if we've headhunted this person and there is no, mm-hmm. they haven't really thought about it, but how would you pitch that question? Yeah, that's why with the kind of wording, it changes a bit. So instead of mm. saying, why are you looking to move on? Or, then I would say, what would, um, what do you think would be a better opportunity for you? So break that down in terms of you're pretty happy where you are, but where do you see opportunity to improve? Mm. You know, yeah, I like it. I because I, I do a lot of headhunting. That's why I ask the question. Mm. My, my, I I would typically say, look, I know I appreciate I've tapped you on the shoulder for this opportunity, and we're talking, so there must be a level of interest. But are there any push factors at the moment um, at your current company 
is, yeah, nice. is one way yep. I would sort of pitch push it. But yeah, okay, wonderful, like wonderful. Um, you've done everything right. You got a candidate there. You got a client who wants to offer. Favorite closing line. Oh, it's got to be okay. If we're, obviously we've had a discussion about money and and all those other things, it would be okay if I'm going back to have a conversation with the client now. If I can secure that package that we've just discussed and detail it, outline it, are you happy for me to accept? Okay. Up to the objections or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I did the um good news, bad news call yesterday. It was just, I haven't done it for so long, but I just remember how much fun that is. <laughs> <laughs> I still use that. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. Let's, okay, cool. Number four, how do you deal with a counter offer? I think with a counter offer, it is, um, it, obviously it's the whole process. So, you know, there's things that you can do when you're right at that final stage and the candidate sort of goes AWOL on you or, or says they've got a counter offer, but it's obviously bringing that right forward in the process. So straight off with the candidate when you're doing that interviewing, once you got past that screening and you're sort of into the interviewing, um, talking about, you know, what is it that, what are your motivators to move on? What's it gonna be like when you resign? All those kind of questions that you dig. And I think they're kind of, there's both the questions to ask, but I'm also looking at that individual. I think if you're, if you have got someone with high empathy, um, people please that I know that vibe, that type of personality, mm. you, you're at much mm. higher risk. So just kind of walking that through with them, scouting out how much they've explored other opportunities. And then I think that flows through. So, you know, when you have that first interview with the client um, and things going well, the candidate's really motivated, getting the candidate to articulate what is better about this opportunity um, than their current one. Um, and obviously going through to pre-closing so that you can um, you can really see, you know, has the candidate explored um, you know, a potential to improve their current situation with their employer mm. or not? That's a big one. If they've done that, they're pretty weary of it. Um, mm. If they haven't, it's just really educating people. I think people get so flattered in a counter-offer situation. Mm. You know, and a recruiter who sees it happen a lot, you just need to not so cynically communicate that it, it, it's not always a, a desperate measure to keep you. It's really they can't face looking for someone else and it's an easier measure to keep you. So mm. communicating that. I really like what you picked up. What, what I picked up on that was that the, the different personalities are more susceptible to counteroffer. And you're, mm. you're absolutely right. Like, mm. as you say, like the people pleasers, they're, the, they're mm. the hardest because they get in that room and they crumble. They just feel like, I don't yeah. want to let you down. Yeah. Um, have you got have you got a story or something that you use that that helps them kind of understand mm. what they're doing in that situation? Mm. Yeah, I mean, I I often relate it to myself because I think it is, you know, it's normal to feel like that. So I talk about a situation when it happened to me and say, you know, mm. you've got all those conflicting emotions because, you know, you're finally feeling like you're getting that kind of, um, you know, um, recognition that you're perhaps looking for. Um, mm. but also realising that when that danger goes away, that often the same factors are there. So I think it's it's kind of talking about emotionally looking at the situation because you've got to have that gut feel about going for something mm. good, um, new, but also having that kind of more objective viewpoint and managing that. Wonderful. Love it. Um, last question. These answers have been fantastic, by the way, Laura. Um, <laughs> how do you pick yourself up out of a slump? Yeah, let's face it, it happens often enough in recruitment, doesn't it, over the years? Oh, yeah. Um, I think I try and look at what is the reason for the slump. So yep. sometimes it can just be you've been working really hard for six months and you just need a few days off and you just need a kind of, um, which is, is perhaps an easier one. Um, I think if it's happening on an ongoing basis, I'm like, let's dissect what's actually happening. So is it the candidate, you know, the quality of the candidates, the type of clients you're working with, is there actually something wrong in that? Mm. Um, or is there something wrong in the process? So where are you getting tripped up and trying to kind of identify that those points? Mm. Um, but then when you get to, okay, we know what the problem is, let's just get on with the show. Um, I like to take my primary KPI. So like we were talking about earlier, it might be that I'm going out to find a retained job 
or I might need to get some really good, you know, I've got jobs, but I haven't got a really good value proposition. I haven't got anything to take out to the market to those more passive candidates. Um, mm. Or it might just be, I need to find a candidate. So I kind of identify what's the number one thing for me to go for. And then I just break it down. So if it's sourcing, for example, I say, right, what's my sourcing plan? What are all the activity? You know, what's the strings I'm going to do? Where am I going to search? How much time am I going to spend on each and what kind of results am I going to get? And then I just block out my time and say, do not think about anything else apart from the next hour and a half. And this is all you need to do. Yeah. And I literally create myself like a tick box because I think activity, if you don't like the activity, it goes to the right place. Oh, 100%. I love that. You've just looped it back to the first question, which is what is the one KPI that matters? You're in a slump. What's the KPI that you need to see happen and yeah. create a tick box plan to to get there? I love it. And it makes sense. Yeah, That makes absolute mm. sense. I've had so many answers on that one. I had some people say, jump in nice. <laughs> yeah, <it's> just, <laughs> I've had all sorts of answers, but um, oh, like just like a nice Christopher Nolan film, you've, you've looped it back to the beginning. You go, oh my God, the twist. <laughs> Dun, dun. It was all right there, all from the start. <laughs> <laughs> Laura, that, that is it. Five questions answered beautifully, all in under 12 minutes, as we like to see short, sharp episodes. So thank you so much for jumping on the show. I know you're in Perth. Yeah. I'm going to have to send you out a... Um, send me that cap. Of, I'm going to send you a cap. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> um, and for everyone back at home listening to this, thank you again. Uh, if you've got anything out of today's episode, please like, share, comment. It does help us grow. If you want to get in touch with Laura empowered decision they're doing great advisory work for um, the recruitment industry in particular in wa so if your team is struggling or they need some help or a bit of a pep talk one of the best in the industry give her give her a <laughs> shout come to me go straight to her she'll be in the links in our linkedin um as always have an amazing day and may all your deals come true Whoa. that's it <laughs> <laughs>